Hi, I'm Ricky, and for my PhD, I'm looking at clues left behind in rocks on Earth's surface today to try to understand what climate was like 140 million years ago. I'm really passionate about understanding climate change and how our past can help us to understand the future of our planet. In the UK, we're really lucky to have rocks from some key periods of Earth's history. The rocks I work on are from Sussex and Dorset. They're a little bit older than the White Cliffs of Dover and they're from the early Cretaceous period. During this time, the UK would have been much hotter, closer to the equator and covered in lush wetlands where dinosaurs would have been roaming. From previous research, we know that the Cretaceous was much hotter overall. Carbon dioxide levels would have been two to four times higher than modern day, and the top layer of the ocean would have been around 30 degrees Celsius. Again, a lot hotter than today. This would have changed some really important global climate patterns, like rainfall. In my work, I want to find out how rainfall in the UK was different in a much hotter Cretaceous world. So how can we find out about rainfall so far back in time? This is where atoms of oxygen with different masses, known as isotopes, come in. Basically, nearly all the mass in an atom of an element is concentrated in the centre part, called the nucleus. All nucleuses are made up of tiny particles called protons and neutrons. All oxygen atoms have eight protons in the nucleus. Most oxygen atoms have eight neutrons too, giving them 16 particles altogether. We call this oxygen 16 but about two in every thousand oxygen atoms has 10 neutrons, giving 18 particles in the nucleus. They're still oxygen because they still have eight protons in their nucleus. They're just a bit heavier. So we call these oxygen 18. These atoms of the same element with slightly different masses are known as isotopes. As water molecules have the chemical formula H2O, we know that they contain one atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen. Because every water molecule contains this oxygen atom, it means that two in every thousand water molecules will have that heavier oxygen 18. Now we know that lifting something heavier is more difficult than something light, and this applies to water molecules as well. So when the sun heats up the surface of the ocean, the water molecules evaporating first contain that lighter oxygen isotope, 16. In the same way, when rain falls out of clouds, the water molecules with heavier oxygen isotopes get dropped out first. In simple terms, evaporation mainly happens in the tropics where it's hot, and rainfall happens as the clouds move north or south towards the colder poles. As a cloud moves from the equator to the poles, the heavier oxygen-18 water rains out first. This means that the closer you are to the equator, the more of the heavy oxygen-18 there is in the rainfall in that location. The closer you are to the poles, the more of the lighter oxygen-16 you have in your rainfall. This means that each location from the equator to the poles has a unique balance of oxygen isotopes in its rainfall, and this will change with the amount of rainfall globally on our planet. Now, without inventing a time machine, I can't catch rainfall that fell in the Cretaceous, but I can use the oxygen isotope balance in minerals that grew in the Cretaceous wetlands. Carbonate minerals, like my favorite mineral, siderite, grow in wetlands and preserve the oxygen isotopes of the water that they're growing from. They form these spherical shapes and are even found in modern wetlands today, like in Norfolk. These siderite minerals are similar to the minerals preserved in the Cretaceous rocks, like the ones I work on. Back in the lab, I crush these minerals, dissolve them in acid, and run them through a big shiny instrument called a mass spectrometer. This measures the masses of the molecules in the sample and can tell me how much of my oxygen atoms are heavy or light in a particular sample. This gives me the ratio of oxygen-16 to oxygen-18 in my siderites along a cliff face, rocks get older as you go lower down. By looking at how oxygen isotope ratios change as you go further down the cliff, we can figure out how rainfall was changing with time during the Cretaceous. Doing fieldwork in the UK, I get plenty of first-hand experience of rainfall. Nevertheless, nothing beats being outdoors and looking for clues about the planet's past.